This is the Clockwork Pi Game Show. It's a modular computer that comes with a Raspberry Pi like mainboard, a keyboard with A, B, X, Y, start, select, and direction keys, a 2.7 inch TFT screen with a resolution of 320 by 240 pixels, a module with stereo speakers, and a 1000 milliampere battery. You can assemble all modules and package them into a handheld device within half an hour or so, depending on how familiar you are with handling electronics. If you take your time, this will be very easy. The trickiest part is to connect the display cable to the mainboard, but once you are sure you have the orientation right, it will click. The Game Shell is an open source project with a great community. If you have questions, you can post them in the forum or on the Discord channel where I'm active as well. You can use this thing to play games on an emulator, listen to music or whatever you can think of using a tiny computer for. It has 8 GPIOs on the back as well as 6 pins for power. If you want to know more about these, I wrote an article about how to connect them on my site and in the Game Shell forum. If you know how to code or want to learn how to code, you can write your own games and tools and run them on the device. My approach was to use TypeScript, Phaser.js and WJS because you can first run your code locally to test it, which is quicker, and then deploy it to the device and see how it feels with the real gamepad in your hands. This is where the last software update by Clockwork Pi comes in handy. With the software version 0.5, they introduced a major feature called Warehouse. This allows you to create your own app or game repository. And by providing your followers and friends a URL, they can update to the latest version of whatever you created. This will make it easier for many because you do not need to use SSH or Windows file shares to copy over the files for which you need a computer. To create your own warehouse, all you need is your own Git repository on the web for example on GitHub. You need to create a few index files based on JSON and define what should be available in your own warehouse. I created a minimal setup that you can clone or copy and paste to create your own warehouse as a starting point. The structure is as follows. A warehouse is a tree structure that has two index layers. The top layer defines which categories you have. It's a JSON object with a list property that lists the categories of your applications. Each entry has a name equal to a directory in this folder, a reference to the next index JSON and a type. Note that the file value needs to be a full URL and relative paths won't work. The next index layer is within each category directory. This index JSON is similar to the parent index JSON as it lists the applications within this directory. The title needs to match the application's directory name and the file points to a tar gz file that has the contents of the game. In addition to this, this index JSON has a shots property that points to a screenshot of your app or game and needs to be a .png file matching the device's resolution. The type of an application can be either Launcher, Pico 8 or TIG 80. You also need to provide a .game file which contains the type of your application again. Note that the screenshot as well as the compressed application file need to have the same base name as the parent directory for it to work. The type of the application triggers the warehouse to start your application in a certain way. If it is of the type Launcher, it will run an executable bash script from your application after it has been decompressed from the target GZ file. If it's of the type Pico 8 or TIG 80, it will install the game files into the respective emulator folders, so they will be available next time you run them. For details, I recommend to read the official documentation for the last two types. With your own warehouse set up, you can add it to your game shell and let the automated process do the rest for your convenience. In my case, I have so far only found the time to create a short demo with a bouncing DVD logo. But I love the idea to explore the technology of writing games with TypeScript and Phaser.js and have them run on a Game Boy-like device with a few additional steps. From my point of view, the warehouse was a missing feature for this device. Especially if you have no computer, this will make it a lot easier to install stuff in the future. Try to imagine a smartphone without the respective application store to install more apps. And you get the idea. Clockwork Pi was kind and provided me with a few of those game shell kits to play around and provide feedback. The first thing I did was to review the 3D files to 3D print your own case. As I'm a huge fan of 3D prints that don't need support material, I uploaded a remix of their design files to Thingiverse that you can actually print without support and with a few additional tweaks. For example, that you can access the micro SD card from outside once the kit is assembled. The next thing I noticed was the bad Wi-Fi signal. I desoldered the tiny ceramic onboard antenna and added an external antenna, which greatly improves the throughput and range. Note, this is not a problem of the game shell itself, but a problem that all tiny single board computers have that trade component size for signal strength. After a few months of owning these, I can really recommend the game shell. It has tons of potential to play around with and learn things. I'm usually busy starting the next side project, so I haven't really tried everything yet with this, but I've had lots of fun so far. If you have any questions about this, feel free to use the comment sections or contact me via Discord or Instagram. Hit subscribe 
and see you next time. Thank you very much and have fun.